Make Love with Pat's Two Cents. I have one question to ask you. Why do you go to church? Why do you go to church? Yeah, that's what I asked. I'm asking for a reason. And you know what's really odd? In the book of Isaiah, God asked the same question. Ah, uh, yeah, this is going to trip you out. Now, I didn't insult you. I didn't call you names. I didn't liken you unto this or that. I didn't, yeah. But God does a little bit. Check it out. That shows he's kind of, uh, he's kind of handed up to there with, you know, with the nonsense with the mess yeah so let's see what he says Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9 starting at verse 9 we'll see how far we go except the Lord of hosts had led, left unto us a very small remnant we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah that ain't good y'all okay Number 10, hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Hmm? Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. Huh, well, mm -hmm. there's your insult. Verse 11, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? saith the Lord, I am full of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? I'm going to stop right there for a minute. God is asking, what the heck are you going to church for? What are you appearing before me for? What is your motive? What is, what is the method to your madness? Why? Why bother? Okay. Now, this is why he asked that. Because, see, it's past two cents still. One thing, if you're in a relationship, let's put it like that. Let's say you're dating or you're in a married relationship or you're real good buddies or co-workers, whatever. Or you are dealing with a boss that is very condescending. One thing you can't stand is the phoniness. You can't stand the lies. Do not misrepresent, right? Doesn't that bug you? Yeah. Imagine. Imagine how that disgusts God, who is holy without defect. Here we are, we're all defected. We're all messed up. And we don't even like it. Don't play me. Don't toy with me. Don't jerk me around. Don't pat me on the head and condescend so you can get something out of me. Because you don't even mean it. That's the way we feel, don't we? Well, this is what God says. Uh -huh. <laughs> Verse 13. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. Incense. Mm. The new moons and Sabbaths. Sabbath? Oh, let me keep reading. The calling of assemblies. I cannot away with it is iniquity. Even the solemn meeting. Your new moons, your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you. Make 
you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes and cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. What do you think about that? How does that make you feel? To know that he feels like that probably about 70% of the churches and the services we have and the offerings and our, and our, our, our using our gifts to edify the Lord. You know what I notice in church? Dealing with gifts and edifying the Lord. We'll go to rehearsal. We'll buy all these tracks. We're getting it all together. And we go to church, deck to the nines, to stand in front of the congregation. And we going to rock them babies out of their chairs because I'm going to sing them straight to heaven because I'm just that good, baby. Do you know there are instrumentalists who practice certain types of styles of instrumentation in order to get people happy? They are boogieing back in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord. They are doing it under the guise of praise and worship. But there is so much hypocrisy and phoniness going on. I used to call it the ego parade. You get the procession of the ministers and the holy people and they come down the center of the aisle. And while they're going down the center of the aisle, some of them are remembering who they were screwing the night before and it wasn't their spouse. They might not even have a spouse to screw. You don't realize that how much God is aware of what is going on. When you, how can I say this? Okay. There have been times I've been at the altar and praying for people or being prayed for, either way. And sometimes the people praying for me smell like an ashtray. And I'm sitting there saying, wait a minute. God delivered me from a two-pack-a-day, 15-year cigarette habit. Boom, just like that. Just by rebuking it in the name of Jesus and resisting the devil. And yes, he did what the Bible said. He did flee. And so did the desire with it. But people don't resist anymore, do they? They feel it. They want it. <laughs> well, you know, God understands. My flesh is weak. They do it. And they do it so frequently that they could come to church, mount a pulpit, and not think anything of it. Not even have the dread or the fear of how dare I, with my nasty living self, get up there and preach a holy word. How I better sit myself down before God sits me down. There seems to be no fear. There seems to be no respect, no reverence to the work of God, to the, to the word of God, to the, the life we're supposed to live for God. The Bible doesn't say bring sacrifices. Not now. In Romans chapter 12, the Bible says, 
I, pres I, 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 oh, what's the word? I got to say it right. Okay, let me just skip midway. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Thank you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. You know, that includes your body parts. Yeah, that includes every part of your body. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Not present your bodies to your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Present your bodies to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's the least you can do. Come on. And be not conformed to this world. Some of you are so conformed, you don't even know who you are anymore. Your conscience has been seared like a hot iron. You know, something burned bad enough, it's actually numb in that area. No feeling left. Scar tissue. Just Some of your consciences are like that. You can tell a lie. You can rip somebody off. You can screw somebody. You can stab somebody in the back. You can step all over people to get to the top. Don't bother you. As far as you're concerned, that's your right. You know, that's the way it is down here in the jungle. You know, dog eat dog. You're going to eat before you get it. Yeah, you don't care. And you feel like, hey, God understands. He knows what you're dealing with. No, he knows what he's dealing with. Having to put up with you. Some of you men and some of you women. Maybe preaching in that pulpit or singing to the glory of God. And you just got through slapping your husband or wife around, punching them, kicking them in ways where it doesn't show. So when they come to church, they can put on that happy face and make you look good while they're feeling lousy. And you don't think anything of it. Our uh, brothers and sisters open the Bibles too. And you and they're sitting there still feeling the pain of the whooping that you gave them. Just because you can. You got them intimidated. You know, I'm going to share this with you. God has given me a spirit of discerning of spirits. And there is a church that I have decided not to go to anymore. Not because I'm angry with the people. I love the people. But they allow one man in their pulpit. And I'm telling you, it bothers me to my core. I feel so repulsed. I try to make myself go and I think about what if he's preaching. There is no way I'm going to let him preach over my head. No, I won't do it. And I'm asking God, don't let me pass judgment. But I feel it so strong. And if I'm proven wrong, then Lord, forgive me. I've asked the Lord, help me with that. Because I don't want to be judgmental when I don't even have facts. But in my spirit, I am telling you, every time when I see the way the man relates to women and I see the way he his wife has never shown up to this church. Never. He comes up the hill to come to church. And he's a good preacher. And they love his preaching. But every time I look at him, my spirit recoils. I don't get that with everybody, you guys. I really don't. But in my spirit, I feel like he has probably, he's probably wiped the floor with his wife. And has probably told her to stay down the hill. And he might have been exposed down the hill and decided to come up the hill when nobody knows his business. I don't know. But there is something about his spirit that set so wrong with me. And I refuse to listen to him preach unless 
God corrects me. And I have asked God. I ask God all the time when I'm not sure about something. Set me straight. Don't let me be wrong. But see, some of you men, you wipe the floor with your wife. You punch your kids in the face and kick them out the door and do all kind of cruel things. Lock them in basements and not feed them. I mean, do crazy stuff. You get some girlfriend that's abusive and then you start mistreating your child. I mean, it just gets bizarre. But you still feel like you have the Holy Ghost right to step up in that pulpit. Let me ask you kindly but firmly, please sit your behind down and keep your dirty hands in your pocket until you can keep them to yourself and get holy again. Because you cannot do that and live holy and think that God is okay with it. You cannot do that and be comfortable with yourself. You should be all over the place getting counsel and prayer. Separate from your wife if need be for her sake. For your children's sake. But you have no fear of God. And that's why you keep doing it. That's why you're okay with it. And that's why you can keep intimidating. No, it's not their fault for making you angry. It's yours. Take responsibility for your incontinence. You are out of control. I don't know what to say right now. I think I need to stop and allow the Lord to do whatever convicting he needs to do through his Holy Spirit. Because it is really sad when people, it's bad enough when people can come and sit up in church and chill while they've got sin smeared all over there. Just tsh, come before the Lord any old way. Smelling like sex. They don't care. I mean, that's the sad part is that they don't care. Okay. And listen, here's one last thing and I'm going to stop this video. Those of you pastors who are counseling women who are married to abusive husbands, how dare you? insist that they stay with that husband how dare you not give them an out god is more concerned about their health and well-being than he is about a piece of paper it is not legally binding when the man is tearing up he's he's breaking covenant every time he turns around you have this god has described what true love is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, God has described what it acts like, what love does not act like. Okay, I'm going to stop fussing because I, I get real hot on that one. Don't you dare make a woman, a child, or anybody else feel like they have to keep uh, it hush-hush because love covers a multitude of sin. Come on now. Somebody has to support these victims and somebody has to bring it to the light. And if you start bringing that crap to the light, guess what? It'll start dying out. Help us, Lord. 